Go more denial, more denial. I don't know. I don't What's going on, everybody? It's Fred here with a, another Firing Squad review. I'm rocking my Machine Head Blackening shirt in celebration of the uh, 13th anniversary of its release. Pretty good album from Machine Head if you've never heard it, but check it out. Uh, anyway, uh, today is not about Machine Head. Today is about my new purchase from the Record Connection in Niles, and it is the new Pearl Jam album Gigaton, which, by the way, is not just a clever name because this double 180 vinyl weighs a gigaton. This thing is the heaviest album I've ever held in my entire hands, just physical weight. So let's tear into it and see if it's any good. I'm hoping so. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, mixed bag on the single so far, so let's find out. All right, right off the get out here, we can see it's a gatefold, a really cool picture of the band here uh, in full performance mode. And also, this is, don't mind my Batman pajamas. Also, uh, this is really an awesome full-size book here with lyrics. And uh, so automatically, right away, this band wins for, um, you know, packaging itself. So here's the track listing. Uh, we're going to check out the tracks in order. Okay, the first track, whoever said, is pretty awesome. Uh, it's, it's longer than I thought it would be, honestly. It's kind of a longer track. Um, but yeah, I feel like sometimes Pearl Jam um, starts off a, uh, an album with, a, with kind of a weaker track. Uh, I think of the album No Code, actually. I think the song's called Sometimes which I don't think is a great starter, and No Code isn't one of my favorite Pearl Jam albums either. But this one off to a pretty good start, I would say, um, you know, for the most part. I, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, the lyrics are pretty good, and uh, performances are solid. Uh, Matt Cameron is obviously a great drummer, and he's been in that band uh, since 1998, I believe. I don't know how it's been that long, but a good starter here uh, with the uh, first track. Second track is Super Blood Wolf Moon. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I feel like no band should have the, the name Wolf Moon. It isn't called Typo Negative. But uh, this is the second track uh, from the album. It was also their second single. And um, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't do much for me. Uh, I didn't like it the first time I heard it or the second time. And now that I'm hearing it on vinyl, uh, it still doesn't, doesn't do too, too much for me. Um, there's a lyric, focus on your focusness. Eh, come on, Eddie. Uh, but yeah, this track is underwhelming. Uh, the second track is, is not as good as the first. Mm, Dance of the Clairvoyance is their first single from, uh, from this album, uh, and it's the third track on the album as well. Uh, you know, I, it's dancey. It's kind of danceable, funky. Almost like It's almost like the verses, especially, feel like almost like a muse uh, groove to them sometimes. It's the only song in the album that I could see from the notes that all five members of the band were involved in writing the music together, so maybe that's why they're kind of attached to it. I'm not really sure. But, um... It's not, it's not bad. It's, it's kind of grown on me the last few times I've heard it. So, uh, and on vinyl, it sounds nice. I don't, I don't despise the song. Uh, it's a weird first choice for the album to be released as far as a song, uh, but, but I think it's, it's decent. Uh, so yeah, this, this isn't bad. Dance the Clairvoyance is, is worth listening to, I suppose. Uh, it, it, it grows on you. Uh, yeah, track four, Quick Escape is good. Great bass line from Ament. Uh, Vetter's vocals are interesting. He does a nice little. Uh, line about Trump in there, which is exciting to hear. Um, but it, it's a, it's got a good groove to it. Um, really enjoyable song. Chorus is straightforward and simple, but a good groove. Um, I think it's my favorite song on the album so far, so Quick Escape is, is pretty solid. Also, Quick Escape, just to let you know, the song's just finishing now. Awesome guitar solo, nice groove at the end here. Man, it's, it's a pretty solid song. I could see this being a fun song for them to play live. The next track, he flipped over to side B here on the album, which is, like I said, super heavy uh, as far as the physical weight of it. It's, it's a very quality pressing. Uh, this album is All Right is the name of the song, and it is All Right as a song. Um, there's some kalimba in there. Woohoo! But besides that, I don't um, find too much spectacular about this song. It, it feels kind of just there to me. Not bad. The lyrics are free verse. A lot of it doesn't really have a rhyme scheme, which is an interesting choice here. But uh, the song is kind of moving along at a medium pace. It isn't doing too, too much for me. So All Right is just All Right. Seven O'Clock is kind of the same tempo as All Right. There's the drums are a little more up in the, in the mix here and a little more moving. But um, Seven O'Clock is, it feels like a Bruce Springsteen song. The lyrics feel Bruce Springsteen-y. All about freedom and uh, the lies we're fighting against. I don't know, it, it feels kind of Bruce to me, a little Brucey. But overall, not bad. The keys in the, in the chorus of this song are really cool. Uh, the keys are doing some cool things in the backgrounds and ornating, decorating the music behind Eddie's voice. But so seven o'clock, besides the keys, not much here that I'm really grabbing onto either. Surprise, surprise. The end of seven o'clock actually has this kind of much to be done, 
kind of part going on, which is which is good. It kind of redeems the song at the end. It's still not a great song. The keys are cool, but the end of the song, the last section they play is, is pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm digging on the end of the tune. <laughs> the next track, Never Destination, Higher Energy. Eddie keeps going, more denial, more denial. I don't know. I don't know if I like that. He also turns the word blisters into a one-syllable word at the beginning of the song somehow. Blizzard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Never Destination at least has some energy. Um, it's not bad. It's it's, it's got it's at least picking up the pace a little bit. Uh, but the lyrics are intriguing. I want to talk about the lyrics at the end of this video quite a bit because the the lyrics are are doing some things for me here, and I'm going to talk about that eventually. But uh, Never Destinations, not bad. High energy at least. Track eight, take the long way. The lyrics are at least a little more personalized here. I feel like they're a little more. Uh, human about one person and I'm gonna talk more about the lyrics later like I said this track has a lot going on a lot of uh, background stuff a lot of vocals uh, there's a girl named Megan Grandall from Seattle she's in a band she she's performs as Lamolo or something like that from what I can find online but um, her voice is a nice variety adds some variety to the album but this isn't a bad track uh, I take the long way it's pretty solid this is the first track that's in a while that's really kind of at least catching my attention I think I'll remember parts of it in my head so that's a good thing the ninth track, Buckle Up, uh, feels kind of like a band as good as Pearl Jam probably could have written this song in two and a half minutes. There's not really much going on musically, uh, at least the first half of the song here. Uh, then you get to the big chorus, the Buckle Up, you see the lyrics like, oh, maybe a big, and then it's just the same thing as the verse, it's just he's just singing Buckle Up instead. So I don't find this song has done very, very much for me at all. Uh, probably my least favorite track so far in the album is Buckle Up, song number nine. Lyrically, by the way, for Buckle Up, there's something going on. I mean, the lyrics are, are pretty interesting, but the, the song itself just is, is kind of staying the same the whole time for me, not doing much musically. Ugh, God, Buckle Up is so boring. It's gotta stop. Next track is Comes Then Goes. This has a little more promise than the last track, but I figured it out right here, what's, what's not sitting really on this album, I don't think, is that the choruses just don't stick with you. Um, there's some, there's, they don't have that hook that keeps you coming back, that makes you want to hear, well, I'm gonna hear that chorus again. So when they go back to you, you're like, uh, this chorus wasn't great. The verses, some of them stand out. I think the verse, the melodies of the verses and the vocal lines of the verses are more catchy than the choruses in almost every single case. So comes and goes, the lyrics are pretty cool uh, for comes and goes. So this isn't an awful song. But the choruses just aren't doing much for me in this album so far. Uh, maybe with more listens, maybe that would change. But there's nothing about the choruses that are snagging me right now on Gigaton so far. Yeah, Comes and Goes, lyrically, uh, seems like the best song on the album, as far as the lyrics go for me. But once again, the, the chorus is not catchy to me. So the 11th track, Retrograde, is, in my opinion, the best song on the album, I think. Um, this is a track that I got to hear this morning, and um, it's, it's really a pretty strong tune. Um, I think it's got a great chorus, and uh, just the vocal hooks are good. Uh, lyrics are solid. This is the song that I could see them playing live years down the road. You know, when you have this with their 11th album or something, when you get so many albums, there are some albums you just don't get, they don't get any attention live, maybe one song if they're lucky. This could be the song, I think, from this album that I could see Pearl Jam playing five, six, seven, ten years down the road, still in concerts. This feels like a Pearl Jam song to me. Uh, that could hang around in their catalog for a long time. So Retrograde, definitely if I had to pick one song from this album, Retrograde is it. River Cross is okay uh, for the end track. Uh, you know, I from Backspacer, they had the song, I think it was called The End. And that song was so emotionally powerful to me that I just, and, and Lightning Bolt was a strong album. I've liked the last couple albums by Pearl Jam, but the end of this album is, it feels, uh, you know, not very impactful. I don't love River Across either, so this is not really a very strong way to end the album, I wouldn't say. Well, that's the end of that album, Gigaton by Pearl Jam, and I'm just not very impressed. What do you think, Dwight? It's true. Yeah, I don't really think it's great. Um, I just, I feel as though after, it's been seven years since their last album, since Lightning Bolt, which I, I thought it was like four years. It's been seven years. It's just underwhelming to me on the first listen. This might be an album that'll grow on you, but I feel like everything's kind of mid-tempo, mid-paced. Not everything, but most of it is. Um, I just, I don't find this to be a, a very exciting Pearl Jam album. I think if you're going to look at this album years down the road, in the rest of the discography, this is going to fall probably near the middle or the bottom. Um, but yeah, lyrically, the one thing I wanted to mention about the lyrics, the lyrics feel, I think he's angry about the political state of everything right now, which many people are. 
But I think Eddie Vedder wants to stay in their mind, but I think he's also afraid to get too political. He's mentioned that in the last few interviews. So maybe he's making his lyrics in this album seem very like generalized. They seem like they're aggressive. He threw some F-bombs out in this album, but I just don't feel like he's saying anything specific because he doesn't want to get too political uh, on this album. I think he knows he's got a limit to her. If he gets too political, some of the some of the fans will turn them off. So overall, I'm going to give this album a 77%, which is a C. Uh, I, I don't think that it's going to be one of Pearl Jam's best albums. I want to give it another listen, but upon the first listen, it just uh, doesn't do much for me. I don't remember much of it already. So, uh, you know, check it out yourself because, you know, that's uh, just like uh, my opinion, man. Pearl Jam. <laughs>